and everything you say can now be used against you. Yeah, and potentially uh, as the yeah. intro to this show. So no, so. but the the big thing is is that we're going to be bringing on the anime club of Hillsdale College, which is a organization that my little our little brother <laughs> Silas, <laughs> yeah, and his his friends have put together. So every day. If I think all anime, you guys have cool like fantasy stuff. Uh, yeah. and he's into this. Yeah, <laughs> no, <laughs> so I mean, they're reading books backwards. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. So he, so he's like a he, he was quarterback of the high school football team. What? Yeah. yeah. So there's okay. There's just weird two weird things. One, we'll probably talk about this in more detail when we have them on the pod. But his football team, it became really popular for them to watch Naruto. Like the whole football team when Naruto entered into Netflix just became Naruto people. So they were all like freaking ninja running all over the, yeah, the field. Yeah, that's great. How, yeah, how good of a team were they? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they were all right. Yeah. 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 They had a bad last year. It was a little tough. Yeah, well, COVID made it tough for everybody. Even the anime <laughs> oh, kids. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah but they were the best prepared. You know? Yeah, Dale, careful with your elbow. You're rocking the table a little oh, bit. Geez. Yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah, as you can see, this is a real professional setup. Yeah. We uh, have you on a board game. Yeah. No, it's fine. Yeah. It, this, trust me, this is not a slide against your height. This is a slide against everybody's our, our setup. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> hey, d- a little peek because behind the curtain. The... You're going to be... Oh, well, he's going for it. <laughs> oh, I, I just thought it... Oh. No, no, no. It's oh, just for the height. It's just for the height. And oh, the, sorry. The, you know, no worries. And it's not It's not against you. Again, we do that for everybody. Brant was very offended that we put a pillow on his, on his seat. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted to let us know. Yeah. But... Hey. Oh, boys and girls. It. He can handle it. He can. Well, you know, you saw you saw him handle it. Uh, that being said, guys, we got freaking professional musician, Dean Sinclair. Professional musician. And uh, all around good boy in the uh, in the pod today. Welcome. How hey, you doing? I'm good. Sorry I look like crap. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you got an aesthetic going, right? And that's what it's all about. You've got the the musician's vibe, right? Would you say? Or is that is that purely financial? (laughs) (laughs) Well, that's cut in a few. Well, that's the nice thing about being a musician is that you have a pretty good aesthetic overlap with hobo. Yeah. (laughs) So you know, based on how much you make, it kind of makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It all sort of works out. Yeah, no, yeah, it fits. Yeah, Yeah, I kind of like it. It's fun. Something new. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Have have you not sort of fallen into this before? Is is it my first time growing it out? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I wanted to set a goal for myself. Yeah. Mm. Right. Last uh, two summers ago, now I I wanted to commit to something and follow through. <laughs> <laughs> so something that you could do passively without any real work would probably be the best goal. Yeah, yeah. And I I'd always wanted it. I always yeah. wanted it. So now that I have it, now I'm like I don't know if that's. I don't know. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens. What's well, a lot yeah. of work? Like, what's your hair care routine? Exactly. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I don't. <laughs> So that's why there's that's problematic. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, you yeah. look. It looks luscious, dude. It looks yeah. like it's come. It comes yeah. together. I appreciate. Yeah, it. <laughs> I think I think fifty percent of it is your facial hair being worked, right? Like the fact that you're trimming your facial hair. I've had the beard for since high school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's, I'm half just Greek. a Greek boy. Yeah. Greek. <laughs> so that's, that's how that works. Yeah, we may have yeah. referenced a short Greek man in the last uh, in the Brant episode. Uh, did you did you catch I, that I didn't reference? listen to Brant. Yeah, uh, I yeah. I heard on episode two. I heard uh, the uh, <laughs> the Shadrach. Beastie Boys reference. Yes, uh, yes, yes. No, yes. I haven't been able to listen to Brands. No, yet. we um, talked about a particular young Greek boy um, with lots of hair who uh, forced Shad to take shots of Malort at a party. Yeah. Um, and who could this have been? <laughs> <laughs> who would do such? Do you a remember a uh, womb graduation your senior year? Oh yeah. Yeah, uh, both my grandmas were there. Yeah, oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so we were all partying yeah. in one room, and in the other room, your grandmas were sitting out a by the keg, by the keg, just hanging out. Yeah, that was great. Yeah, that was yeah. a great night. The yeah. party. <laughs> that was a, that was a fun. Everyone's like really passing around a single bottle of Malort. It's like <laughs> if we had the foresight. Uh, <laughs> well, this is before bad. COVID. Nobody germs weren't real at that point. Yeah. You know, yeah. especially yeah. in a party setting. I mean, yeah. forget about it. Forget yeah. about it. Yeah, if whatever you had though, the Malort would kill. Instantaneously, anyway. Yeah. Well, that's one. Malort used to be that bottle would have been a, a Florida-made bottle. That was a thing. Chicago's, uh, you know, hand, the Chicago handshake <laughs> liqueur was made in or like outside of Tampa. Yeah, you know, for a very long time. It's now made back in Chicago. That's great. Mm-hmm. No, uh, I, I, it tastes me, a little better. Let me <laughs> not not by any marginal about. Mm-hmm. Um, quick question: Was it originally Chicago and then moved to Tampa and then moved back, or was it always As, in Florida? It was it was originally Chicago. Okay, okay. I believe Carl Jepsen or Jepsen's, uh, a nice Swedish 
immigrants uh, probably settled Only in the Anderson. Swedes would yeah. do that, dude. It's a wormwood liqueur. Yeah. Mm, okay. Wormwood. Supposedly. It tastes well, really bad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's funny when you, when you, it's, that's a, that's a very immigrant population thing to do where they, they take, you know, uh, flavors from their homeland and then put them into alcohol or put them into sodas or something. Like one of my favorites is celery. Do you know what celery is? I feel Yes. Yeah. I feel yeah. Like, it's, it's that is stuff it, that is that Hispanic. No. No. You can oh. only buy it in. It's that stuff that you eat and that it burns more carbs than it gives. No. You. No. No. That's celery. Oh. That's celery. Oh. This is just celery. Okay. So yeah. celery though is actually celery flavored soda, and you can only buy it at Jewish delis oh, in like really? some boroughs of New York because nobody, even you know, old Jews don't even drink it anymore. Is yeah. it made in the U.S.? Or? Yeah, it's made in the U.S. Mm. So you can drink, and so you need it as a like primary component in some uh, traditional Jewish mixed drinks. So, you know, people go around trying to find it and whatnot, and you got to go to, like, weird ethnic stores and whatnot. But, yeah, yeah. who else? I, you know, Weird what, ethnic store, Chef? Okay, you got to well, put a value judgment on it, No, no, because it, dude. even most ethnic stores don't even carry celery. You got to go, you know, niche yeah. to get celery. <laughs> you got to go to the, the transplanted, you know, yeah. street market. You know? But I've done it. I've tried it before, and it, it tastes... Exactly how you imagine it just tastes like celery. Uh, yeah, I, delicious. The last like cool like import thing I had. Uh, have you ever had the privilege of having Jollibee? You know <laughs> I don't think so. Jollibee is. Uh, wait, is that a candy? Oh no, no, no that's it's the, a the Filipino f- chicken chain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, <laughs> it's like the Filipino McDonald's. Like they're everywhere in Philippines, right? Yeah. yeah so um, my buddy's half Filipino, and yeah. he was down visiting, and he's like, you know, <laughs> there's none in Wisconsin. Wow. He's up in Madison. So we yeah. went to one of the three uh, Illinois locations, straight up on Michigan Ave, across wow. from the Art Institute. <laughs> Prime real estate. Dude, and yeah. there's like spaghetti with like hot dogs in it. That's yeah, what I yeah. got. And it came with like two pieces of chicken. I said, This rocks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> rocks. Yeah. Yeah. The, but it was, yeah, it was pretty chaotic in there. That man. sounds exactly what a five year old would when they're trying to imagine perfect food. <laughs> They're right there. Like, what would it be? I love spaghetti. I love hot dogs. Hot fried chicken nuggets. <laughs> Throw it all together, uh, dude. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it was awesome, man. Yeah, all the pictures I've seen is sort of like a lot of different gravies and sauces. The gravy over was thing. incredible. Yeah. 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 Well, so what did you have? Did you have the spaghetti with hot dogs and chicken? Yeah, I thought that would be the most uh... genuine. Yeah. I think it was like they actually have like a traditional like more yeah. item yeah yeah but i, I was something like, you would find uh, yeah yeah, yeah. At a kfc but but i got uh yeah i got the spaghetti <laughs> I, was, I think this is what i should should and do. was it good was hungover, yeah <laughs> yeah well that sounds like a hangover meal Dude, yeah. that would be a great hangover meal we oh. need more jollibees oh, okay over under though jollibee okay the spaghetti with hot dogs in it mm-hmm. uh, okay and Cincinnati Skyline Chili. Dude, I've never had Skyline Chili. Okay, okay. Shad, you've had it, though. I had because my roommate, you know, who we've mentioned multiple times on this podcast. For culinary reasons. For culinary reasons. uh, Made me try it. Oh, is this Mr. uh, (laughs) Mr. Mr. Fat Daddy himself. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) Yeah. Who's going to be here this week? We're going to record with him. Yeah. Yeah, But he, uh, yeah, look forward to the Joe Papalardo episode where he will address the allegations. Uh, (laughs) He got funnier. He did. He did. Yeah. Ever since he's like, I'm a comedian. It's like, oh, you're funny. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I never thought you were that funny before, but now you are. Yeah. He, you need uh, to put the work in. Well, yeah. he, he, he's like a computer. You know, he takes things and he, he inputs the data and then, you know, takes out results and whatnot. So he's just been practicing all his jokes so much that now he's got it all in a depository. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I've tried it. And it's just, this is what I always dislike about regional foods where people are like, it's weird and cool. You know, it's like, in Nebraska, we put chili on top of our uh, uh, cinnamon rolls. They put chili on top of cinnamon rolls in Nebraska. And you think to yourself, I wonder how that tastes. And then you try it. It tastes exactly like you would imagine, right? You bite it and you're like, this is just tastes like you put chili on a cinnamon roll. The same thing with Skyline chili where you're, you know, you're eating it. It's like, oh, this is just a bunch of... How do they eat it? Just out of a can? Well, yeah, they warm it up in the can and then they make a patch of, or not in the can they pour it out of the can warm it up make a batch of spaghetti and then pour it on top and some people mix oh, it but some people yeah, yeah they don't even mix it though sometimes it'll just be like a, a pile lot. of yeah yeah a pile on the spaghetti and so half of it's just naked spaghetti that you're eating <laughs> which does not taste good so it's just white bread with you know mediocre chili on top and i was looking over while i was trying it and joe was trying it and he looked up and he was like yeah <laughs> 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 Dude, 
then you would have the confidence. I've, I don't know if I've ever seen it in a store. Mm-hmm. But also, don't go to the chili aisle at, at the Jewel Osco. Yeah, yeah all free. that often. So I'll yeah. have to check it out back home. <laughs> yeah, so this is our second episode that we've had somebody from the Chicago area. Oh, true. Shoot. <laughs> yeah, you, so you were raised up in the uh, in the suburbs above Chicago, right? But right now you live in the heart of the city. Yeah, I, I grew up in McHenry, yeah. Illinois, which is um, it's kind of like Wisconsin. Uh like right over the border. Um, yeah. But yeah, right now I live uh, in the Wrigleyville neighborhood, which is like the Greek row Where the Bears of Chicago. play. Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not, not quite. Yeah. <laughs> they used to play there, yeah, as yeah, did the uh, the Cardinals mm. football team. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yes, yeah, so I live right by uh, where the Cubs play. So it's a time. It's fine. Yeah. It's uh, fine. Yeah. You got to love a place to I, live that's fine. I have a garage, so that makes yeah. that, like, that's huge. Yeah. Something that, of, somewhere to put your scrums. So many little buddies, well, no, well, it's just, little rats. It's parking, right, right is the big thing. That's, that's why the, the garage thing. is that's the That's why that's yeah. valuable. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, because you get that. Do you, you share the garage with uh, two oh. other cars? <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have to climb over my passenger seat often yes, to get out. That's great. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Yeah. It's fine, you know. So you got a lot of rat boys? A lot of rap boys. Yeah, mm. that's also that's a Chicago band too. Rap boys. Rap boys. Hey, yeah. shout out to the rap boys. Shout out rap boys. Um, but yeah, no. Um, yeah, there's a lot of rats. It's really bad. And there's like these kind of famous like old like posters that tell you like don't leave your food out. Like we have to take care of the rats. It's just like a, like this terrible cartoon <laughs> of a rat. It's it's awesome. It's like yellow and black. It's so funny. Yeah, yeah. The uh, we had a ton of rats in in DC and. The thing about him too. One time, this is okay, this is kind of this is a screwed up story, but we were all sitting on the porch drinking and you know watching cars drive by because I lived for a while on this really strong thoroughfare, and like a two lane or like a four lane highway basically. And while we were sitting there, a rat just sort of walked into our yard, broad daylight. And we're like, what the hell is this? Yeah, yeah, something going yeah, wrong rough, with this rat. Rough night. It's having yeah. a rough night. So that it, it walks over to our basement steps and then just sort of <laughs> falls into the first basement step. <laughs> and then it just it like actually fell. Yeah, no. Like, uh, yeah, yeah. It, it fades. I can't do it, this it life anymore. <laughs> the rat gave up. I get I get I get that rat, dude. Too much trash. I understand. Yeah. You know, not enough pizza. And it's sitting there and it just we watch it just die. <laughs> Like, go through its death throes. Like, it's breathing heavy. It's, like, trying to crawl up, but it can't. And we're all, you know, just dumbfounded, silent. <laughs> 15 minutes straight of us just holding our drinks and watching this rat die. And, and you did nothing to help well, the poor well, creature. Well, of course not. It's vermin. You know, we had a yeah. strict it's anti-varmint a, policy. It's a yeah. living Supreme creature, Shad. Vermin. Yeah. yeah. It's a yeah. living creature with a, a soul to be obliterated upon death. There's nothing you can do. You just got to, you know. He would have. Here's the thing: <laughs> the rat. If it was you yeah. going like crawling, and the rat just like watched you die, yeah. like dying, he would start eating you alive. Exactly. Yes. He would go nibbling right away. They yep. dig under the garage, dude. They're insane. These guys. We had to yeah. get. We had a exterminator come out. <laughs> this Polish guy knew what knew what he was doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He took care of them for a while, but it's New Year. Yeah, new Kyle rats Coles must have worn out. New rat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah rat call him back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Mr. Kowalski. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, yeah. I mean, it's it is important that we do hit the questions before we get into the the major uh, the whale section uh, mm-hmm. that we asked Brant at the very least about Chicago, right? At yeah. The end of the episode because you know he talked a lot about Chicago in his episode, so we want to make sure we we hit the the core questions. All right. <laughs> First and foremost, uh, Italian beef. Where do you buy? It? <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> All right, so I'll I'll say I haven't been to every single stand. I haven't been to every beef stand. Yeah. In the city, um, but, but like the core institutions. If we're gonna talk about the cores, there is a right answer. Yep. I've done this rant before. <laughs> It's Al's beef all the way. Yeah, Al's beef. Okay. And let me tell you, anyone who says, he probably said Portillo's. Did he say Portillo's? He said Al's beef. He said Al's beef, good. <laughs> <laughs> so Portillo's started in, I believe, like the 60s in Villa Park. Yeah. Yeah. Al's beef, I believe, started in like the 20s or 30s in Little Italy. Tell me which one is going to be. <laughs> Port- Portillo's is the Navy Pier of food. Yeah. Uh, okay, so well, well here's- You can here's... ship that, ship that. Bad word, and then like <laughs> ship that crap all over the country. Al's beef, it's it's the real deal, and okay. it's about the bread and the gravy. Mm-hmm. It's it's smaller cuts of beef, 
And it, it just, yeah, I, people are like, oh, you can get a cake shake at Portillo's. <laughs> like, oh, you had their chopped salad. I don't give a <laughs> about your chopped salad or your cake in a cup. Yeah. Your hot dogs, I don't care. I'm talking about an Italian beef sandwich. There you go. It's See, Al's. I never Al's understood. number one, Italian. I never understood the cake shake thing because much like the gravy on a you know cinnamon roll thing, you know, I imagine you just drinking it and then a whole chunk of cake hitting you in the back of the throat, you know? You're just like, oh, that'd, that'd be an unwarranted surprise. I don't really know how it works. <laughs> See, I, he doesn't I, even deign to go into that location. Dude. No. He doesn't even go. care. Yeah. yeah. I will say from personal experience, I've seen Dean go to, at, to bat for Al's beef in ways that you know, uh, we, no man that we should cannot, reasonably that we cannot describe about. until we get to the Patreon. If yeah, we yeah. Talk about it. <laughs> um, that being said, okay. uh, next step then is best deep dish pizza. Um, so I grew up the family. We were into uh, pizzeria Dewey. Okay. Dewey. So this is very specific. Yeah, it's just the named second. after the younger brother and Malcolm in the Middle. Of course, yeah. <laughs> Dewey. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So um, <laughs> this is a sidetrack. <laughs> he that actor was in like Joe Dirt, right? Doesn't he play like young Joe Dirt? I don't. I've never seen Joe Dirt, so I don't oh. remember. It would make sense though. I remember being like the blockbuster, like looking at like the VHS tapes, and I remember like that's Dewey. Like, <laughs> and I remember like watching like Malcolm in the Middle, like not really watching it, but like I remember yeah. it as a kid growing up, and yeah. I remember like liking Dewey. Yeah, specifically because he, his attachment to Joe Dirt. Because he was my age. But then yeah. like, at the store, I'm like, oh, Dewey made it big. <laughs> <laughs> He's in Blockbuster. What's he doing now, dude? If, at this point, if if Josh was here, I would say, oh, Josh isn't here, by the way. Yeah, I, I think he. I think he's. I, I, I looked this up recently because Becca's really into Malcolm in the Middle. And yeah. you think he's just a no-name guy, right? Oh. The main dude who played uh, Malcolm. Frankie Muniz. Frankie Muniz is now like a crypto fluencer. Yeah. You know, he's oh, trying right. to sell NFTs. Hacking people's Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah um, he is married, though. He's a married man. Nice. Good yeah. for Frankie Muniz. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, just because I was listening to a podcast where they went on a rant about Frankie Muniz for like literally 20 Muniz, minutes. But, Sorry, my bad. Yeah, yeah. But, that, that is me. Yeah, was he, he was with the man of binds in that one flick, right? Weren't they like two kids on like a spy mission? Yeah, what was that movie? <laughs> doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't I matter. was gonna say Big Fat Liar, but that's that's uh, when he turns the guy blue. Yeah, no, yes. it's Big Fat Liar. Which yeah. that's who is it? Who that's Shia LaBeouf? Right? Oh, is it? Yeah, uh, I'm pretty sure that's Shia LaBeouf. Mm, no, no, it's Frankie. Oh, okay, okay. Um, anyway. Disney uh, Channel in the afternoon. Pizza, on the yeah. <laughs> Uno and Dewey. And if you get an Uno chain restaurant mm -hmm. and they call it a like Chicago pizza, like, I'm not trying to be like, here's the thing. I'm not trying to be that guy. Yeah. I know, I know I'm from the Burbs. I know my place. Mm. No. But you yeah, if you go to like a chain Uno, it's not the same as that's just the, they have the rights to the name, not the actual recipe. Yeah. So Uno and Dewey are my favorite, but a lot of people like lose. And I, I'll be real, most, most, it's about the tavern cut is what most people in Chicago yeah. would eat most commonly. You can't, you won't have a very um, long life if, 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 <laughs> if you eat actual dish deep is dish. like your go-to. You yeah, know? yeah. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm. It's a... for when friends are in town. It's like cigars. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you just can't be doing it frequently. <laughs> Dude's like cigars, dude. Yeah, I, I, I feel the same way about cigars actually, but I. I'm I'm a I'm the I'm a part of that weird subset of just I, I hate deep dish it's not pizza I'm I'm a real firm believer wow. in that I'm not gonna get mad about it yeah no. I'm, I'm, that's fine if yeah you, like, well last night we had Detroit style have yeah. you read it I Detroit did styles? I I had buddies last night oh yeah I Detroit. I really liked it yeah I've never I, had it I do like me a good detoisa yeah yeah detoisa? yeah is that French. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, yeah we got to bring back za. I've been saying this for ages. <laughs> za, I mean that's kind of like a nineties thing, right? Call, call it pizza za, <laughs> but from you, yeah, 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 sure you yeah but uh, yeah. yeah, no, it was really good. It was good. I like that. Uh, it's like that kind of like pan type of thing, like that yeah. square. Mm -hmm. I like, it was funny because like they seemed like they just kind of drizzled the tomato sauce like on top, but it yeah. wasn't like a full blown later layer of like. <laughs> Hunts, yeah, <laughs> like, like at uh, like from the can, like what well, uh, I've not seen deep dishes, hunts, but you know yeah. what I mean. It's like that layer, yeah, yeah. Of sauce of it. I kind of, I yeah, I definitely prefer maybe a little less sauce, admittedly. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Chicago Tavern Cut, like that's that's good deals. That's, that's, yeah. there you go. There that's you good go. pizza. Good that's side, dude. Good side. I don't even remember what else we asked. I think it was something about the ecological disaster that is the Green River and whether or not you're okay with it. Or, I dude, think... I went as I went this year to see it. <laughs> It's insane. Yeah. <laughs> it's but crazy no, dude, that they It's like do one that. of those things where it was like 11 degrees. We're like, ah, oh, you know, they didn't do it last year. Like, let's go see the river. Yeah. 
And I got off the L and we're like freezing my ass off. Yeah. <laughs> Looking at like all the people who came in from like Aurora to take pictures of Green River. I'm like, I'm just like them. I'm no better than them right yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> I just had a shorter trip. I go home to my garden unit, which is a fancy word of saying basement lair. <laughs> Apartment. It's warmer. Uh, I, yeah. I don't like. You took all the light bulbs out. Like you Patrick's put it in Oregon, you know? Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. It, but I know the organist for the Cubs. I used to, he's played on campus. Oh, really? At Hills. At Hills of Con- yeah. yeah. Uh, he was like the old keyboardist of my band. He like got a sick gig. He's like one of the organists. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that is a sick gig. Yeah. Though. So yeah. like you just hear him play. It's awesome. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's cool. Sweet. That's Sweet. cool. No, okay. Well, cool. We we got your, your, your couple of litmus tests on Chicago, right? We, we hit that. But, you know, we're here for a core reason, right? We want to know what you're into right now, what's going on with you. Mm-hmm. We want to know something that you you maybe haven't done a ton of research into, but you know who knows? You just your it's your monomaniacal obsession of the week. Your whale, homie. What's your whale this week? Do you have an idea? I, I, the, what's what's really grabbing your gourd? I'm thinking right now? a lot about rock music. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, go, yeah, go, yeah, go, yeah, go, yeah, go, yeah, of course, I mean, yeah. Maybe, Develop. I think about that maybe a little, uh, often, but yeah. Um, I don't know. So like, I, I went to two different shows. Last week, where I knew the drummers mm-hmm. for yeah. both. So context, right? For those that may not know Dean Sinclair, right? Who who he is? Drummer, professional musician, right? You 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 sometimes go on tour drumming. You're in a lot of bands as a drummer, right? So you've got you've got experience in the scene, specifically lot, the Chicago free, scene. A lot of freelance with yeah, the, yeah, exactly. Uh, Chicago land, yeah. So yeah. This, it, it makes sense that you would be going to shows to see drummers and you know all that jazz, yeah. But. Yeah, um, so not jazz, it, rock music. Oh, okay, yeah, rock music. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did go to a jazz show recently too. Um, but um, yeah, so I knew the drummer for he played. Do you know um the song like A B C D E F U? Da, da, da. You know that song? Uh, if if but, you don't know the song, this, yeah. this might not be a very fun story. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I the the drummer he like played with her. The 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 artist name is Gail. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He played with her like on Fallon and whatnot. Um, oh, cool! But he was in her opening band, and there's a venue in Chicago called Subterranean, and she was there, and um, he 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 gave me tickets or whatever, and this is like one of the most popular songs like in the world yep. right now, and um, like I was in like Paris like uh, like a month or so ago, and like it's on the like it was playing there too, yeah. right? Yeah, and it was like I was expecting it to be like super packed, sold out, and it like. And this is no shade on the artist whatsoever. She played great. But it was just like very, it was like very empty. And really? Was, like 30 million listen, listeners on Spotify. And it wasn't a sold out. Grant, they did have two nights at the venue. Yeah. Mm. And the venue, I don't, I don't know the cap off the size of my head. Maybe like three, 400 mm-hmm. room. Hmm. But there, it wasn't as full as I was expecting. So again, would, you, would you say it was more closer to the hundred edge or the the three hundred edge? Like where it was on the like it was like the the crowd wasn't past the the sound booth. Okay. And again, and again, I'm not. There's there were factors. For, doors were at five thirty, which is very early. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it, was, it was an all ages show, admittedly. Yeah, that so also going to be earlier. And yep. it, was a, it was a Tuesday. I believe. Oof. So, all ages show. All ages show on a, a Tuesday. Tuesday. That's oh, where love just, happens yeah, so during a school year. I, I understand, <laughs> but and the, but the next night, I know the drummer also for a band called Dance with the Dead. It's like this like metal synth wave. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not something that would have thirty million Spotify listeners, but this place was packed. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Be, and I was just thinking, I was like, that's so strange that like the the song that is like presented to you. Hmm. That has like the the person isn't as like willing to go out yeah to see yeah. it but like if you're like into this like more niche music you're like oh my gosh like this band's here like I'm gonna like I'm gonna be there and yeah. see this yeah. and check it out well, and like that band like is fully instrumental mm-hmm. yeah that's with the dead well it, it's, so it's I, it, it was like again I'm not sh- throwing shade on no, of any course, of that yeah. I thought Gail put out an awesome performance and I mm. think it's really cool. That someone that young is like playing like guitar and bass, especially like as a girl, for people to see that, I think mm-hmm. that's really awesome. It's just it's just the idea of like this whole Spotify thing. It's no. not, I think it's somewhat mis- misleading. misleading. So I was yeah. gonna I was gonna say that because you know more and more now, um, just full disclosure, I work for a label right now that published some of Deed's music. So you know, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, the, just to be, just to be clear, we're good friends. We go way back, yeah. um, but. You know, right now we're looking to release some new music, 
And the, the process, part of it is, you know, if you're not a part of a scene already developed, you have to sort of insert yourself into the scene. And that requires, you know, being on curated playlists. That requires being written up on the blogs, et cetera. And you can kind of buy your way in some ways oh, into high listener accounts on Spotify. And I'm not saying that's what she did, but... When you start from the ground, I think it's authentic what she yeah. has, but also there's definitely a you know the machine can kind of perpetuate itself, yeah. right? Yeah. And when you're something that's niche, I tried to buy tickets to go see The Armed in Detroit. I don't know if I know them. They played the Adult Swim Fest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that yeah, sounds like something Chad would be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're like you, a, you showed me uh, the video. They they rock. Yeah, they rock. They so they're like kind of like this. They they call themselves ultra pop. It's like. Hyper pop, but harder. Is I it guess like, kind of like a hundred gex type thing. No, but like harder. It's kind of got like oh, okay. a little bit more of like a of uh, I would say like a a core edge. But they, you know, play a show at El Club, which is this you know yeah. venue in Detroit, and sold out for like Been there, yeah. four months in advance. Yeah, right. I tried to go see the show, couldn't go see the show, and just specifically because they're they're niche because there was a lot of other bands like jukebox the goats still had tickets that were open and mm-hmm. all this stuff but you could not go see the arm now of course they're local but at the same time it's like these people who are dedicated to something that's a little bit more niche especially now post-covid you know when people are coming out of the covid thing it's like yeah who do i want to go yeah, see the most and yeah yeah it's going to be the person that you have a more personal connection with yeah, i'd say that minor obsession right and it also seems more attainable too I guess if like if somebody wants to buy tickets, like I'm more inclined to be like, oh yeah, I'll go see the Punch Brothers because you know they're the Punch Brothers, and I really like their music. And you know, even though if I if I was had the opportunity to go see somebody like I don't know John Mayer, who cares? <laughs> uh, I would be like, oh, I mean, yeah, cool. That sounds like it could be fun. But if I was given the choice between the two, I'd I'd like that ultra specific thing that I'm into as opposed to something more general. I don't know. Yeah, and it also just like the, I think the venue puts a lot. Like in like to your decision too, yeah. and like yeah. tickets aren't like always like cheap, but like a club is gonna have a cheaper show, and yeah. odds are like the more niche artist is gonna be playing at a rock club as opposed to like an arena. Yeah, yeah. Too. So I mean, like, yeah, like I've never seen John Mayer. Like that'd be awesome to see John Mayer, but like I'd very much it'd be like a let's see what I can find on like StubHub, like yeah, yeah. day off type of thing. I would love to see his band, mm-hmm. you know, but. Um, but then again, let's let let's clarify real quick from, you know, we're doing a lot of personal anecdote, but we're also very specific in our tastes, right? Like we're definitely the kind of people that enjoy the smaller band kind of situation because a lot of these things that are not objective truths for the, you know, the average person, right, who would be more inclined to go see a stadium show. Yeah, of course. And like, I think, yeah, and I'm not trying to be like the old guy, but it's like the the crowd demographic for the people that were very hardcore for at both of those shows, yeah, mm-hmm. were there's their their etiquette a little different, yeah, yes, a lot more phones perhaps at the all ages, yeah, uh, pop pop show, like the whole time, like yeah. filming everything, but they they were singing along, so like they were still having a good time. It's just like, you know, as opposed to like some people being like, you can't ah, shoot. Who was it? Someone was telling me like they went oh. I had a friend see um, Anderson Silk Sonic. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They saw them in Vegas. I guess. Obviously, this would have been a bigger show too. Yeah. They gave out these like sealable bags. Like, yeah. These, and like you couldn't, you had to put your phone in there. Yeah. Do you know what? I'm, yeah, yeah. No, I've seen I've that never before. Seen that. I've never seen yeah. that before. I'm, I'm, I'm into it. I think it's it's fascinating. It's yeah. like I think to a certain degree because like I think like all like the the smaller bands where all like we like to film each other and like tag each other. And yes. I think that's important. But I guess obviously you get to a certain point. Anderson Pac and Bruno Mars don't need. Yeah. <laughs> they don't need the exposure of <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. You know? of the uh, 360p video you shot on your your flip phone. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah, I mean, it's like filming a whole concert. It's like unless, like, yeah. not all of you are going to be uploading this to like no. YouTube, and if you did, it's going to get flagged. In a yeah. Second. So, <laughs> so it's just like I don't really. Like, it's going to be uploaded like as fireworks. Silk Sonic twenty twenty two full HD multi camera. It's yeah. just one guy in the third row, you know. And it's like, and not again. I'm not trying to knock like younger people or anything like that, yeah. but it's just like. It's is that this might just be their definition of what a concert is to them, and like, yeah. that's that's fine, I guess. You know, it, it's just it was yeah, it was just very cool. It was fascinating to see those two artists back to back. Yeah. So yeah. something that I've noticed because you know living in a college town, you get to go see bands, you know, like student bands perform sometimes, and I only go when I know people because I look forty five, and like <laughs> every time I go to a show, I'm standing there, and all these you know 
people are looking at me like, who the hell is this guy? Like, who let him in? And yeah, I'm like, dad? Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, I graduated in 2019. Calm down. It's not, well, it is weird, but it's not that weird. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I usually only go when I know people. But right now, and I think this has something to do with, you know, that show that you went to, Dance with the Dead. The kids love harder music now. I would you agree. Know? You know, like the, a great example of this is like the Astro World disaster, right? Yeah. Where you never would have in the past gone to a rap show or hip hop show in any in any genre, and that even kind of be a worry because people are really thrown I, in, into each other. I like, don't know, man. I mean, you saw Straight Outta Compton, dude. <laughs> any NWA show had the same possibility. No, I don't know. Any What I'm saying, it that, wouldn't have been at that. Sc- Massive I, scale. That That's massive true. scale. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't no, popular like, music it's, at it's, the time. Well, okay, who was at who was at Astro World? Kids, kids. Yeah, That's primarily white, yeah. upper middle class kids. Yeah. Right, and right now those guys are just losing their mind about hard music, you know, and moshing and stuff. It's yeah. wild. Like you, you know, kids will play at the at these concerts, right? You know, people are dropping like. I was I was sitting there and I was I was hanging out with a friend Jake Coonrat who uh, you know yeah. you know Cooney Tunes. Mm-hmm. He was sitting there <laughs> and he was like somebody played um a My Chemical Romance song. Yeah. And the the audience was going crazy. They were all smashing into each other and stuff and he was like what the hell? I was in my bedroom alone listening to this music because I was uncool. Nobody would talk to me, and this is how I had to do it. And yeah. now there's just kind of this more of an edge. It's very depressive. Like the Zoomers are not okay. No, it's true. That's true, but Yeah. yeah. I worry about it sometimes. I feel like a lot of fans of that music might put on this. They might try to not be okay intentionally in yeah. order to feel like a part of this music. I get that. And I feel yeah. like that's a, you know, again, I'm not trying to make a broad <laughs> claim here. I'm yeah. on camera. <laughs> but, but it's just like, I, yeah, I, I just feel like a lot of like certain like pop punk emo music, I think you yeah. have to be... Um, you have to know yourself when you're getting into that because you don't have to be, um, you know, sad to yeah. be a participant. Yeah. yeah. Well, this. a good example of this is Idols, right? Which I, I know, know is like I, a, is a really, you know, kind of, mm-hmm. oh, Shad has no real punk creds. He brought up Idols. But, you know, you know, their whole thing is, you know, we can still do this and not be screw ups. Yeah. You know, I think it's impressed. great when bands have like things at their show, it's like, yo, it's like, it's okay not be okay. It's like, if you feel this way, like, call this. Yeah. I think that's, I think that's awesome. Mm-hmm. It's, it's just, it's just sometimes you find some of the fans, like, Twitters, <laughs> and it gets a little crazy. Yeah. <laughs> but um, but yeah. I think, I, I agree. I think, um, I think rock is becoming more present in the mainstream. I think a lot more younger artists are, I think we are looking at, I feel like if pop music, for us, maybe in like the 2010s, was maybe a little bit more square in terms of drum machine. 80s, it's yeah, not yeah. round music. 90s music got a little round yeah. again. And I think if we're looking at our fashion too, I think we are very in like a 90s, early 2000s yes. type yeah. of mindset. I, I think the music that we are listening to reflects that. The fact that you know Machine Gun Kelly, the biggest. He, he I mean, again, I'm not, I'm not trying to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> with, with, I might drop a little something. I think. Yeah. But I think like. I think it's cool in a way that he's able to be presenting this music to a new audience. Yeah. And the same way I'm sure Blink-182 was a huge gateway for a lot of kids, like yeah. their first punk. And then from there, they maybe got out of like the pizza skate, like the Vans yeah. things and like yeah. got into other types of music. I yeah. feel like that is what Machine Gun Kelly will be doing. And the, the thing I think the failing with him, though, is I don't know if he has the sense of humor. No. That, oh no! That the, Mr. Uh, I am weed, you know, like that the early um, punk artists. Yeah, do. I mean, it, it, so to speak on like some early of, punk, I mean like two thousand. Yes, yeah. popular punk. Yeah, We're not yeah. talking minor threat. No. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So like, to speak on that just a little bit, the fact that you could play, um, freaking uh, shoot, Fred Durst. Uh, oh, Limp Biscuit. You can play Limp Biscuit at a concert. Now and people will a know what it is and then be excited that you're playing. Oh yeah, break stuff right. Like yeah, yeah they're just or Roland right. They're just gonna be excited right. Well, okay, Roland is objectively a good song. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Roland, Roland, Undertaker's <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah, but uh, yeah, I I feel like um, and again I don't know. I think the young music fan also kind of likes a little bit of 
I think they like the humor. I think they, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, there's a slight irony. Yeah, yeah, oh, irony, yeah. yeah. Sure. yeah. To, I think that's how, like, this, like, type of fashion, like, people like the Oliver Tree, like, type mm-hmm. of, like, yeah. or, like, still woozy, like, type of, like, dress code. And we're like, wait a minute, like, now it's, like, everywhere, dude. Yeah, now yeah. it's, like, huge, like, the mom jeans and, like, the big white shoes and just, like, funny random t-shirts. And it's just, yeah. like, I, yeah, it's just, I, it's just kind of, it's it's kind of yeah. cool. It's, like, you know, it's, like, I always thought, I'm, you know, I'm present in the music scene or whatever. And then, like, a year of not going to shows, you're like, wow, there's, like, a whole new breed of bands that, like, I need to, like, find out who they are. And, like, mm-hmm. these, like, high school, college kids, and they're, yeah. like, playing music that's... We did this bill, um, a, a joint called, like, Reggie's in the, in the South Loop, right near Southside. And um, there's this a younger band, like, their parents had to, like... Yeah, drop the them bill. off. Like, why that bill? Like, <laughs> yeah. what? This is, like... And um, their plan, I was like, this isn't, like, this isn't really, I didn't think it was that hot. Yeah. And then I'm talking to them, and, like, I knew, like, there's, like, oh, we know this one band. They're having, like, a younger band that I think is very good. Like, yeah, like, we're playing Thalia Hall, like, Talia Hall with them, which is, like, this very large venue in Pilsen. And it's, like, well, you guys weren't very good. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, like, but, like, you're, like, you, like, you listen more and you think about, like, maybe good's not. How I'm defining good, I man. That's not no. the point. Yeah, yeah. It's it's, it's more point. about what resonates with the audience yeah. than it is about what's objectively yeah. well played music. Right? Yeah, often. Yeah, it's like it's like one of the bands I play for, um, like Capital Soiree. Yeah, um, good stuff. Thank you. Yeah, so it's like yeah, I'm just like live guy for them, but all the recordings were like drum machine, like yeah. they were very like '80s centric, and now it's like I'm starting to like play drums on the recordings. They're like going for a more of like a '90s, a lot more '90s dream pop like yeah. gaze thing. And it's like that's just like that's what the sound is becoming. Right yeah, now. it's very yeah. yeah it's it's cool. I, I I'm happy that rock. I think I'm I'm happy about. It. And I think rock fans get so weird. Like we get mad when we're not popular, and then we get mad when, when like, you are popular. When yeah. you are popular. <laughs> yeah. So you gotta pick one. Yeah. And like you have to just accept that younger people are gonna like take this thing that's like maybe sacred yeah. to you, and they're gonna make it your own. And it's like if you like bands like, like the you know '80s metal stuff. It's yeah. like I'm sure the '70s rockers were pretty annoyed by Motley Crue too. Oh, you know? so it's <laughs> oh like, for sure. Yeah. It's just like you know, it's gonna yeah. happen. So yeah. Well, we that... need to stop being so. Part, part of that, I think, is what's cool is that, I mean, rock was a dead and languishing genre for, like, the last 15 years. Yeah. It was rough. Yeah. You know, unless you were into Bush, you know, and, like, all the subsidiaries. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That yeah. sounds great. That album's yeah. good. 16 Stone. <laughs> 16 Stone by Bush. Good album. Yeah, yeah. Well, everybody's got, like, Do a... You, I, I, this is a purely a... Somebody who does not know what he's talking about asking yeah. a question, so, like, you know, be gentle to your poor boy over here. Yeah. Would you say that the popularization of the Black Keys helped with the transition and reentry of rock music into the popular? No, I think that was actually kind of the opening salvos to a real dead time. But you think? You think so? Yeah. I think a certain type of rock. I think. Yeah. I think Black Keys kind of like that garagey type of For sure. sound. I think they're technical. Like they know how to play their instruments. No, they're good musicians. Right? Yeah. But I think a lot of like Chicago, there's like a big. I feel like garage. There was a time at least like bands like. Like Twin Peaks or like yeah. Post Animal or like uh, like Whitney, kind of like country in a way. I'm not saying Black Keys are country, but it's got you this kind of like garage. More Will blues. goes from Chicago. Yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, so it's yeah. like I feel like that has something in our DNA. Yeah, yeah. But Black Keys, uh, yeah, I feel like they got on alt right. I don't. I think like the first. I think da 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 da. Yeah, da, yeah. Da, that was before El Camino. El Camino had like Gold on the Ceiling and Lonely Boy. I think that. Mm, yeah. Lonely Boy is super poppy, in my yeah, opinion. It, yeah. yeah, it's great. I think that was probably, I would imagine that would be their biggest commercial. All right, 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 yeah. right. But I don't know. Yeah, no. biggest commercial hit is in the most commercials. But yeah. The, <laughs> uh, what's it? Over, over under, uh, well, uh, uh, oh, oh's and la, 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 la's. In songs? Yeah. I think, I mean, I'm fine with it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if it's. It's just a melody that's just not played on an instrument. Yeah. I mean, I guess it's like a vocal line. I don't think it's lazy. I think yeah. if done right, I mean, if I like the song. <laughs> then it's good if, if you don't, it's bad. No, no. Songs typically don't start with la la la. If yeah. they did, I'd be like, this is going to be so <laughs> corny, but. Yeah, that I have had a really strict anti no 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 la 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 hey 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 do do do's policy. I don't uh, like hey hey hey. Yeah. yeah. And then hey. I was listening to Head Over Heels 
by Tears for, Tears for Fears, which is my favorite Tears for Fears song. And at the end, la, da, 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 and I was like, no, this is a great song. And then, you know, it kind of grew on me. But this is a Homestar Runner episode where they make fun of that, where there's the big band Limousine, the big 80s hair metal band that they have is like yeah. a, in the show. Writes a song called Feed the Children. <laughs> and it goes, la, 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 la. Hey, hey, na, na, do, do, do. La, la, na, 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 na. You know, it's just that for the whole song. Um, but more like, we need to feed our children. <laughs> so we wrote this crappy song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I got to oh, gotta step away for a second because I got to do freaking Josh's job over here. And I got to okay. check what we're doing on time. Oh, okay. Right what, so other controversial question then. Fade out. Um, I'm fine with it. Okay. Yeah. I I mean, yeah. I think there was an era. It sucks. Dylan says it sucks. Yeah, like fade out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I like it, I think. I mean, I don't dislike, I mean, if, if it fits the song, you know, there's such, sometimes it's just like, if it's the perfect chorus, yeah. don't stop. <laughs> like, just keep on going. As, yeah. a, as a cover band, uh, playing in cover bands too. I don't like fade outs yeah. because it's like, ah, shoot, we have, have to, to write us. We have to write a, how to end this song now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's kind of annoying. Well, that's but... especially tough where since you're not the band who plays it, you know, normally they could rely on having a screaming audience of people sitting there and just stop playing. They'll still love it. Yeah. Yeah. No, but they have a, <clears throat> yeah, but, well, an audience of people that are screaming it along and they're just going and they're going and they can just ride it for the rest of the night. You know, it's yeah. like, um, my, my wife saw, uh, Neil Diamond once. Uh, and another uh, friend of mine seen Neil Diamond. Both of them reported he plays Sweet Caroline 15 times, start to finish. He just he, he this the last third of the show starts, and the rest of it is him doing Sweet Caroline. He'll you know the last one, ba ba ba. He's like, all right, everybody, we're doing it one more time, 15 <laughs> times in a row. Can you imagine playing in that band? And <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, if I had the opportunity, I would 100% take it. Oh, no, for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I'm proud. imagine, like, it's your seventh show in a row. Yeah. And you have played Sweet Caroline a total of 60 what, times already. What yeah. venues does he play? Is he, He's, like, bigger than a casino circuit. Stuff, yeah, probably. I think yeah. so. I, I he's still know. doing nostalgic circuit stuff, but yeah, I, I assume. Think, I think he's doing, like, mid, like, probably hockey stadiums. Yeah. He's probably not doing yeah. arenas. But he's probably doing hockey stadiums, yeah. uh, basketball last courts. Much long. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, but um, that's crazy though. Yeah, that song. I don't. <laughs> that's a good chorus, but like you listen to the verse and you're like, is this a good? <laughs> yeah, it's like we we're only here for one for one, one part of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> I once uh, I was working at a county fair once, oh, and yeah. uh, on one of the side stages, a, a Neil Diamond cover band played. No way. Yeah. There's Neil Diamond cover band? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? That's yeah. the world we live in. Neil. Uh, yeah, but they're playing at a side stage at a county fair, yeah. so, you know. Yeah. They're touring. Yeah. 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 They make Three Doors main. Down played the main stage the next night, so. <laughs> what? Where was this county fair? In Washington State, so yeah, Evergreen right. State Fair, this which was is like in Monroe. The, it was like 2017, maybe. Yeah. Like, well, no, it was earlier than the, that. I think they're from Mississippi. Yeah, 2015. Okay. Yeah. 14. Yeah. But they... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, hearing Kryptonite blare the distance was was pretty funny. That song rocks. Yeah, <laughs> I'll defend that song. As a kid, that was like the Superman song. Like when it would come on the yeah. again, that was on the radio. Yeah, yeah a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that song was awesome. Yeah, my favorite Superman song is Superman by Goldfinger. But <laughs> uh, what about the what about the song at the start of uh, Scrubs? Oh, I'm no Superman. I'm no Superman. Yeah, yeah. come on. Uh, I'm no that Superman. Is that I don't know. It's it's just some it's yeah. it's scrub, so it's some random alternative song. Yeah, but mm. whatever. Yeah. We're at uh we're at the forty five minute mark. Great. Yeah, Great. We're, we're cruising, dude. We're cruising. It's happening. Dude. So I'm just ranting. <laughs> that's okay. That's it's the point. What, that's, that's the what, point. That's what the monomaniac yeah. uh, monomaniacal obsession is. Yeah. You know what? But the only reason we get to do this show. Mm. Right. The only way it's possible is because of our beloved patrons. Mm. Right. Uh, thank you guys so much for putting the money down that is necessary for us to continue doing this. Uh, you know, and spend the time required. We thank you very much, uh, and we got to thank our lieutenants, our top donors. Uh, no, first and foremost, of course, Joe Papalardo, our first top donor, followed by Mom and Dad. Thank you guys <laughs> so much. <laughs> you, uh, you are, you are the real heroes here. And yeah, yeah. of course, if you are above a certain tier on our Patreon, you're able to ask questions of the crew uh, in our AMA segment. Oh and, no way! Yeah. yeah. And so, 
He's uh, like, I didn't sign up for having Joe Papalardo no, ask I me see, questions. Yeah, I've seen this guy online for once. I'm always late to the lesson. <laughs> uh, um, he, we make it up. Yeah. We'll go first. Th- these are easy questions, nothing crazy. Yeah. So uh, Joe... Uh, was the only one that sent in a question. So first and foremost, will any Straley family members be appearing as guests on the show with time? Dean, what do you think? <laughs> it's a, it's a question think, for me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Dean, do you think of any Shad or Dylan siblings will be? Uh, I would imagine so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good, that's a good take. That's a good answer. Yeah, All right, I, next I, question. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would imagine. Yeah. Uh, I mean, as I as mentioned at the start of the episode, we're hopefully going to be having the anime club on at some point. So Silas will be on. Silas will be on. Yeah. Um, and my. Our mom is going to be in town, so that'd be in my, May. That'd be a great list. So yeah, we're, Amber Straley. Amber Straley might be Amber on Straley. the podcast. So that's yeah. something to think about in the future. Something yeah. to look forward to. Um, and this one's a little bit. Your folks were so great. At, yeah. Uh, oh yeah, uh, yeah. At uh, your wedding show, yeah, yeah. I, I enjoyed yeah. Yeah. chatting with them. They got good vibes. Yeah. yeah. Well, they're also they're pretty young, so you know. It's yeah. like kind of thing. They know about rock music. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> yes. I'm named after a Beastie Boys song for a reason. Yeah, there yeah. you go. Yeah. We should... My mom once passed out at a Beastie Boys concert. Yeah. She in the front row. She she got dehydrated and fell down, and they had to surf her back. And my my dad, so it was it was at a Edge Fest in Washington, and my dad went to the to the medical tent, and while he was there, he saw the Beastie Boys play at hoops, like in a basketball court, a few you know a few. Like a, like a few yards over, like, like 100 yards. And he, to this day, he's like, I should have just walked over and be like, hey, room for one more. Uh, but <laughs> Dude, it he should have. He should have been great. Yep. <laughs> I don't know. Is he even a good basketball player at all? Whoa. Whoa. Careful. You know, dad can ball. Dad can ball? <laughs> all right, cool. Dad can ball. Dad can ball. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this one, he says, he, he prefaces it saying, this may be too personal. Oh. Uh, Is this who also asked this, Joe? Uh, Joe Popolardo, okay. yes. Okay. Uh, which is, what are some wild dreams you have for this show? Wild <laughs> dreams. Wild uh, dreams. Again, to make... This isn't for me, right? No, yeah, yeah. No, what okay, wild yeah. dreams is for this to blow up so Dean, you know, so that Neil Diamond watches and he says, <laughs> I need that man as a drummer. Sweet Dean Sinclair, like, play me drums. He's like, maybe that verse isn't that good. <laughs> Neil Diamond rewrites yeah. the verse to Sweet Caroline. Like, yeah. what, 40s, 50s? How old is that song? I think it's in the 70s, It's one of those songs that's, like, it's never, it's always been there. That's yeah. true. Never it's true. Antediluvian. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Before it's history. like Red Sox people. People like this song. Yes, uh, goodness. I. Well, I mean, that's a good article. I'm curious why that's a thing. I. I would say, first off, financially uh, sustainable. Make enough voice. money to get a studio space is the. Yeah, the that's that's a big thing. As once we which in Hillsdale the, County is actually super yeah, possible. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very crazy reasonable. cheap. Yeah. You have a storefront on the main street of Hillsdale. How much do you think it costs a month? Have a store like a business. 500. Yeah, 500 bucks a month. That's right on. Yeah. Okay, you know, so that's the best oh thing about God. it. You don't even need to sell a single damn thing, you know, to have a store here because yeah. it's so cheap. It's pretty wild. Yeah. So, that being said, you know, we're That's that's good. Yeah. I'm happy like, to hear that. That's good. That's definitely not the case. Um <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Chicago. Yeah, you got to spend like uh, Nearly a hundred dollars an hour to use a practice space in a big building somewhere, yeah, right? Water's got to get green somehow. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, you got to put. Lightfoot sitting there, just asking, uh, please, please, more. We need to make the river green. <laughs> no, yeah, I have a rehearsal space. I, I yeah. split with some people, and yeah, I, it's a great facility. Yeah, I really love it. I think it's the best in Chicago. Um, but yeah, it's um. It's a little pricey. It's a cash of yeah. It's a chunk of change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Goodness. for sure. No, but yeah, it's uh, that's probably primary number one. Yep, that'd be really cool to. And then you know that way we don't have to set and tear down this place every time we re-record. And yeah, we would have a nice little space. We could bring people in. Mm-hmm. You know, have a nice little green room area and all that. Jazz. Give everybody bottles of water. Yeah, it'd be yeah. great, dude. I just it'd have a great. glass of water today. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost out too. Oh no. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah, but any dang way, thank you so much again for the patrons and for your questions. Uh, if you get to the AMA tier, you can ask them yourself, and we'd love, to, we'd love to get some from you guys. It's true. So. Yeah, you know, do it once, then cancel. Yeah. And send us, you know, it, we'll, we'll take your money regardless, and yeah. you get us to ask, you know, you get to ask us a question. So <laughs> there you go. That's, <laughs> that is the, the price point for a question. But yeah. Any dang way. Uh, so, yeah, I... Um, <laughs> what? Nothing. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Come on, segue. All right, segue. All right. Cool. Uh, I saw a segue. Yeah. I remember, <laughs> the time, I, I remember the first time I saw a segue. Yeah. It was uh, fourth or fifth grade. 
and they brought in a weatherman for school from like one of the news. I don't think it was Tom Skilly. Yeah, but I think they brought in some weatherman. Yeah, from like a news station. And I think he like did the broadcast from the school, and he was like, it played over the like the intercom. It was like we were just like in the gym. Yeah. And, and you like just watched they have like a it. TV and he's like doing the weather. <laughs> yeah. Or something. <laughs> and we're like, you guys have to be quiet. Like we had to be like dead silent. But he's like, I don't know what, but he's like, and this is a segue. He like had a segue with him. <laughs> and I don't know if the bit was like all weather men have segues. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if that was like, I don't know if that's true or not, but. There was a connection between a Segway and a weatherman yeah. talking. <laughs> he probably was like, huh, how do I really identify with the kids? Yeah, right. yeah. there like, were Segways I... at that point. Yeah. You know, the inventor of the Segway, you know, seriously injured himself. I don't know if he... No, he, he died. Have... He died, yeah, on a Segway. He died in a Segway accident. He was, on his, he was on his home property on an off-road Segway, which I didn't know is something you could buy. Yeah. But imagine, like, going up a hill, you know, like a park, like a trail you're hiking, you know, with you and your family or something. You know, you've got your like, <laughs> kid in a backpack and some dude just flies Rough by. Riding cycle. Flies, yeah. roll it, roll it, roll it. <laughs> what? Um, <laughs> you know what's the, the funniest part about that story? And it's a tragedy, all right. Yeah. A man died. Um, the funniest part of the story is that he was on his property like his his mansion or whatever, and he had a huge crew of people there that he had invited over, and he was showing off how quickly a Segway can stop by driving full speed towards a cliff edge and stopping beforehand. Did not work, and he went over the side. Oh, that's gosh. the story. But that's actually how it happened. Yeah, that's the story. So, you know, facts rec- check me on that if you'd like, but... That's what I heard. We're gonna get the Spotify misinformation. Oh shoot! Uh, tag. <laughs> yeah, I was. Yeah. About COVID nineteen. That'd be huge yeah. if you guys got that. That'd be awesome. Yeah, I know. It's it's it's. Uh, I don't know. I, I once heard a joke where it's like that's when you know you got the good episode for a podcast is like <laughs> COVID nineteen misinformation. Yeah, but... <laughs> I, I don't know. I have my thoughts on that whole thing. Yeah, you can save it for the Patreon if you want. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. That way, only Joe will know your thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, sure we have more patrons than that, but. Sure, he's heard that rant before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a million crazy. times before. But it's yeah, it's like we're all like, we like, we gotta get the Joe Rogan podcast off. And everyone's like, yeah. And then we go. Also, Spotify should pay their artists more. It's like <laughs> it's always comes back to that. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, well, I mean, there is a bit of a. They probably should pay their artists more. They I mean, probably. Yeah. I would, as an artist, I would like that. Yeah. But also, as an artist who is not a huge like international, st- like people make their living. Off of Spotify, like they're straight up our people, and they're not necessarily yeah. the household names we all think. Yeah, and so we try to get this whole format removed. Yeah, we're gonna really, I think, screw over a lot of people. Yeah, I don't know if people. It's the people that the ones that complain. I think are the ones who are that the absolute lowest. Yeah, you no know, financial mm-hmm. gain from it, and the absolute highest. highest yeah, you know, who are paying their publicist. Yeah, yeah, and so it's just, it's just like. I yeah I don't know how I feel about the whole we gotta take ourselves off of Spotify to like what are we protesting right now? Yeah. like I don't know that's yeah that, that is that is kind of rough too and... I like I mean yeah I'm not a I wish that was I wish this wasn't how music worked right now yeah. but as an independent artist I, I've shipped T-shirts to like different countries and stuff yeah. you know and so like that would not have happened that, that's yeah, that's actually Spotify. there's something about funny it. about that too where it, it I don't I wouldn't even say it's any more prohibitive or any less prohibitive, probably less prohibitive than radio was for years, right? Because, like, in order to break out, you had to get on the radio. A label was essential. And, yeah. of course, now with the certain buy ins to certain playlists yeah. or reserved spots, it's becoming more radio yeah. in a way. But still, the fact that you know, how, how many stations could you really get at once on a dial in yeah. your car as opposed to. You know, there's the most popular for like every genre now has like this is whatever, this is like new. Yeah. And I think, I don't know, I think, yeah, I think it also has, I mean, what music is right now with rock, I feel like Spotify is a, a source for a lot of that inspiration for younger artists. Yeah. I don't know. Mm-hmm. No, I found, I mean, Spotify has introduced me to countless, you know, bands that I've yeah. become, you know, like I, I was cursive, like one of my favorite bands. It's like, um, band out of Nebraska, you know, I've, own multiple records, you know, I've listened to tons and tons of hours of their stuff and you know, I got I found thing. that on Discover Weekly. And that's the thing. And like you found them on Discover Weekly, but then you went to purchase their actual yeah. albums yeah. and things like that. And it's like you probably wouldn't have bought that album if you like wouldn't have had like that exposure. 
yeah. ran it free. I think the problem but... is, though, is people are always going to be thinking about the potential, right? It's like, of well, course. if I got an extra two cents off of each one of those listens, how much more? <laughs> well, that's insane. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. I know. I, I'm just yeah. saying. Like, I'm, I'm throwing out hypotheticals A here. growth from a fraction of a penny. To yeah. Like, yeah. Two, two cents. cents. <laughs> that's the thing. But then, the, the, yeah, no. I don't know. I don't know. I wish there was something else. I, 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 it's fun to think about, like, what will... Because it's, this won't yeah. last forever. No, of so course. it's funny to think like I'm like trying to like imagine in my head like I can't think of anything like what's gonna replace yeah free yeah like, like, <laughs> you gonna... listen to music in your brain yeah, yeah. It is. yeah you yeah, got to get yeah. sci-fi with it yeah, yeah. of course you got to go to the full extent but... VR Spotify dude yeah, I don't know I uh, I am now the proud owner of, of a, a VR, VR headset, headset dude it's virtual now... reality yeah yeah, yeah you got, got it the whole through work I got it for for work oh, uh, wow. from my job and uh, yeah let me tell you dude it's a it's a lot better than you think it's going to be. Cuz you you watch all the videos and stuff, it doesn't look like you're like I don't I don't get the deal with this. But when you're in it, you got the the you know, the sound going into your ears and you're you're seeing what you're seeing. You feel like you're there, dude. Do you have to, like strap you to a chair when you play or something so you don't like wander outside? No, I mean it's like <laughs> take your segue off a cliff. Yeah. Like how do so, you yeah, take it off a cliff? Well, I mean like yeah, like is it's, it stationary? Like, no, well, so it's it's an Oculus, so the whole situation is I you mark spaces in your room digitally, and it puts up a, a, a fake barrier, what? like a, a grid. So when you approach the grid, it appears in front of you in the game. So, so you, you know, know you're that going you're, you're going too far. And so most of the time, if you're moving in VR, you're moving like any other game with a stick. And you're there, just... So like, are there big maps still? Yeah. It can be? Yeah, yeah. I, but you, it's it's hard to explain, but... He's like, maybe I need to get a VR headset. <laughs> like, I didn't know. It's like... Yeah. Do I it's donate it's... to the Patreon <laughs> or do I, I buy a, a VR headset? VR headset. Not mutually exclusive. Yeah. <laughs> Not mutually exclusive. Not mutually exclusive. <laughs> you can give us $1 and yeah. then buy yourself a VR headset. Can I headset? rent your VR headset? Yeah, dude. I'll freaking I'd, That'd be I'd fun. Rent it out. That'd yeah. be a fun little side hustle. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Those, are, those are actually popping up all over the place. Yeah. Like rentally, renting your VR virtual Well, it's yeah. like you you build the space for it, and then you have like stations, SG. like a Dave and Buster's kind of situation. Oh my gosh. Yeah, and people go it's in like there. A it's, it's like yeah, a yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that was a big deal when VR was initially very cost prohibitive, but now you can get one for three hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, it's totally not cost prohibitive. Yeah, but like that's like a console though. Like, it's like yeah, a console. Yeah, yeah. Like any people are buying PlayStations for more. Well, Two hundred more dollars, and you yeah. can have a storefront and he'll yeah. yeah, yeah, for a month. <laughs> for yeah, one month. month. For a month of storefront. Yeah, and you can make your five hundred dollars back selling clay. I don't know. <laughs> or renting, yeah, renting, renting out of virtual reality, renting yeah. out a virtual reality yeah. studio. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I think that's a good idea. I mean, <laughs> I don't get a few it. magic cards in there. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> magic cards to sell, dude. I, I, we got to do a whole episode on how freaking that's a scam. Oh yeah, all cardboard magic cards. Dude. Yeah, magic oh. cards, baseball cards, all of it. Just it's, a it's insane. It's a, it's a currency. That stuff, man. Dude, yeah, yeah exactly. And it's literally pennies on the dollar to make yeah. a card, and they could sell for thousands. Right. Like yeah, the materials I, are incredibly cheap in comparison to what you're getting on returns. Oh, that, it's crazy. Like, I watched this one guy, and he's like, this is my house. I got it all because of Magic Card. <laughs> he plays it like it's, like, the stock. Yeah. Like, the That's what you gotta exchange. do. And you can do that. And it's all tracked like stocks. Honestly, you know, like, people talking about NFTs and stuff nowadays, you know? And it's like, oh, we're just basically making up value and, you know, et cetera, and this is all just a big just scam. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. cards are exactly yeah. the same thing. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. you're this is NFTs it's, before it's, NFTs. It's manufactured rarity. That's yeah, actually right. a good point. NFTs are, wow. It's just like, yeah, you're right. It's like, there's a picture of an athlete with a bat. Yeah. <laughs> well, so back in the day, that's... dollars When F yeah. NFTs first started, because I saw, like, some influencers post about it, like, a while before it blew up, before, like, the SNL skit and all that stuff. Yeah. And it, it used to be like that, where they would release it sort of like decks of cards, and you would buy booster packs, and you know people would trade them like that, right? Yeah. Except for it was just non fungible or whatever. Uh, but now, you know, so it's it's the same thing. You just you can just go and buy a deck of magic cards, and sometimes you can make more money that way <laughs> if yeah. you get lucky. You, yeah, no, if you buy a box and get the right card, you can pay for the box. Slash, yeah, yeah, you know, and then you like keep buying the boxes ones for like a buck or two single. Yeah, yeah. no, I uh, I wild. recently purchased a a. a a large number of magic cards from a, a friend. Heck yeah. And uh, I have I found this app, and what you do is you scan each card, you label its condition, and you know put it into a database, and it tells you in real time the property, sorry, the, the value change of all of your cards. So you can see the amount of- Like money. it's a portfolio. Yeah, you invested in the cards. Yeah. It tells you how you, you put in how much you invested, and then it tells you what your growth is over time. 
and like whether or not what <laughs> cards are increasing and decreasing in value. Right? It's got charts and everything. It's crazy. To yeah. A, to a lesser extent, like my Discogs collection, yeah. like has yeah. that, but not not to this. It's yeah, not like it's, it's crazy. as yeah. crazy. Yeah. Like with that, I was <laughs> in Detroit the other. Day. Uh, I went to this place called the Detroit Beer Exchange. Oh, great place. You know? Yeah, it's yeah. It's a silly concept. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like, um, it's like, oh, this people are buying this keg right now, so we're going to, like, increase, its increase price, yeah. the price. Yeah. And, dude, it was, like, crazy, man. Like, like Brooklyn Lager was, like, less than Budweiser. Yeah, for, yeah. I guess, like, Brooklyn Lager, that's not, like, the most valuable of craft beers. Yeah, necessarily, yeah. But, like... Yeah, well, and then every once in a while, they, I think it's like once every two hours or so, like they have a market crash, and then like a whole bunch of beer is incredibly cheap for a short time. Dude, I got Final Absolution by, uh, was that Dragon's Meat? It's like yeah, the yeah. The ten percent Belgian triple I got for like four bucks. Nice. <laughs> so in that sense, that's cool. I'm yeah, wondering if they make. I guess, but like, I wonder if they um, make more on average from that by I artificial, don't know. like if. If they if they figured out a way to calculate it so that the house always wins, it must be beneficial. To, yeah. yeah, like why else would be. you do it? Yeah, yeah. it's got to be fun. So, that's also a good way to like clear out. Like the the problem with the like for example Hopcat there used to be like a Hopcat Chicago yeah, um, and Chicago has the most breweries including the like now I don't think, no not even including the suburbs like Chicago as a city has the most breweries in the country by yeah. number not like per capita or like whatever but like sheer number we have the most and so then like Hopcat comes like we have options we don't yeah. really need a Hopcat with like what like gazillion taps and like yeah, all yeah. these. So I think they went down. I don't know if it's purely because like the inventory stuff, but like kegs ain't cheap. Yeah. Really. And so like that's why, you know, I mean, I mean, there's cheaper than, you know, other, there's other options for, but like <laughs> you buy, that made no sense. But yeah. like <laughs> obviously once you sell a pint for five bucks it at, you know, or more, yeah. it gets, you know, it pays yeah. for itself. But they too many, and beer goes bad. Like yeah. once you like tap a keg, you don't have like a super long time, yeah. dude. Uh, man, when when the pandemic, like, when like in Chicago, like, we would kind of like open and close, open yeah. and close. Like you're like, oh, I'm going back to the bar, and then you get like this beer on draft. You're like, <laughs> like, this has been here for months. <laughs> this is so bad. Oh, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, I'd love to keep talking about this, but we, you have oh, somewhere no. you gotta gonna have to be in oh. the in the next hour or so, and we still have to do Patreon ah, stuff. Yeah. So we gotta call this. Yeah, uh, I got to work. Thank you guys so much. Anything you want to plug before we we move on to the Patreon? Um, I'm in town right now for uh, I'm playing with a group called Mid American Elevator. Mm -hmm. um, I recorded the record uh, last summer, so now it's just getting mixed and all that jazz. Um, yeah, that's it. Um, if you want to follow any like my projects or like whatever musical shenanigans, um, I'm probably most in, uh, active on Instagram. Uh, so that would be D Sinclair Drums. Dean Sinclair Drums. Yep. Yeah. If you need a drummer, Neil Diamond. Yeah. This is your boy. This your boy. Is, I said boy. <laughs> <laughs>